The Nigerian army has arrested a high-profile IPOB commander in the land of the indigenous people of Biafra. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome back to this wonderful channel where we bring you back-to-back -back update and information as it is. In case it's your first time of joining us on this wonderful channel, kindly go ahead and subscribe, like, comment, share. And also remember to on your notification button so that whenever our news drop, it will be the first one we'll collect them. Let's go down to the news proper. I see the hot. You know, Shelley, as um, the Nigerian army, the NIG military has arrested a high profile IPOB commander in the land of the indigenous people of Biafra. I the full detail of the information according to Vanguard News, the Nigerian military, in collaboration with the Department of State Service, DSS, has arrested a top commander of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB. The arrest, which was confirmed by a verified source, was made possible through intelligence gathering and joint efforts between the military and DSS. According to the military statement, the arrest commander, arrested commander was actively involved in coordinating IPOB activities in a bony state and had recruited mercenaries for further attacks. The operation, which took place on September 9th, 2024, has sparked mixed reaction from the public, with some questioning the necessity of the arrest and calling for the military to focus on apprehending other high profile targets such as Belo Tuji. The arrest comes amid ongoing insecurity concerns in Nigeria with the military facing pressure to take decisive action against anti-military groups and terrorists. The collaboration between the military and DSS in this operation highlights the importance of the interagency inter cooperation in addressing security challenges. As the situation continues to unfold, it remains to be seen how this arrest will impact the activities of IPOB and the broader security landscape in Nigeria. <laughs> uh, say, Taylor, um, whenever it comes to the one that concerns Southeast, uh, you will see this soldier, you see DSA, you see civil defense, you see everybody gallivanting. Everybody will be act, uh, acting as if uh, and I then be the boss uh, because uh, they know that um, apparently this one concerns Ndibo <laughs> and somehow, somehow Ndibo uh, does not have enough mouth in the federal government, you know, because uh, the president, now the Yoruba brothers, uh, the vice, now the Asa brother, uh, they ask uh, even the senate, now for a uh, senate president from South South. Uh, they put it on call all this way the same, and she say, Igbo man, uh, no get mouth for that. Their preparation will be say, did yeah, and you know, get uh, any strong talk, uh, will be say, Igbo man go free talk for that talk. And um, you find out that um, the Igbo themselves are even a uh, problem to themselves because uh, if you go to other states like the northern states. Uh, you find out that seeing this police checking point and the rest of them, they are rare, something rare. But when you come to Ali Igbo, if you are going to Enugu, if you are going to Anambara, if you are going to Imo State, if you are going to Abia State, if you are going to Port Harcourt, you will see these police people lined up, taking money from conductors, passerbys, and the rest of them. Nobody is saying anything, but it doesn't happen like that in the north. And if you go to the north, uh, like this Tujibelo, who has been terrorizing the northern part of Nigeria, and the government have failed to apprehend such a person, the question is, why are they apprehending people uh, who are on on legal process of, of achieving their freedom? Uh, because IPOB has many times stated emphatically that their mission is not a violent mission, that they are here to uh, bring uh, a, another nation, to bet another nation that is called Biafra, of which you know that 1967 to 1970, there was a banter of which after uh, the then head of state, Gowon, uh, he said, no victor, no vanquish. That is to say that um, nobody win for the war. 
Meanwhile, but before we continue on that information, something don't happen for Zamfara uh, Air Force uh, don't buy uh, notorious terrorists and 38 others in Zamfara State and uh, Nigeria Air Force. Now then they do that one. They say they don't go for that place. So they then finish uh, the uh, notorious boys where we say they did there and they buy about 30 something. Uh, let's go down to the full detail of that information. The Nigerian Air Force say the notorious terrorist Kim Pin Haliu Sububu has been killed by its special forces, although based in Zamfara. Sububu terrorized communities in Sokoto, Niger, and Kaduna states. Sububu's death comes a few hours after the Nigerian army announced the death of another terrorist campaign in Zamfara state, Halil Ubuzu. Confirming the death of Sububu in a statement on Friday, the Deputy Director of Public Relations and Information Nigerian Air Force Group Captain Kabiru Ali said NAF Special Forces of Operation Hadirin Daji in the company of other ground troops initiated a follow-up exploitation mission after troops encountered terrorists in the vicinity of Mayanchi during the mission. It was confirmed that 38 terrorists had been neutralized with four bodies retrieved for verification. In addition to the elimination of the terrorists, a significant catch of weapons was recovered including two rocket propelled grenade RPG tubes, one RPG bomb, three PKT machine guns, five AK-47 rifles, 29 magazines, and over 1,000 rounds of ammunition of varying, varying calibres. Meanwhile, two prominent Northern groups, the Arewa Youth Council, 30 Forum, and the Northern Awareness Network have commended the Nigerian Army for killing Buzu and some of the fighters in Zamfara State and Northwest. In a statement in Kaduna on Friday, AYCF President General Yeri Mashetima noted that the recent military engagement with bandits showed a newfound tenacity departing from previous operations. <laughs> you don't show that. Uh, this one a big big English now these people they speak here uh, but now for Zamfara uh, this thing they happen and um, uh, you agree with me that there is no state now in Nigeria that is safe for anybody no state is safe for anybody in this country called Nigeria uh, if you are working anything you are doing uh, they say that they call them Oyo Oyo mm. Oyo <laughs> They say Anambra State Assembly amends electoral law ahead of LUG election. So, <laughs> uh, the government will we get in uh, the government of Antona War. Uh, the government of Antona War. Uh, because if not the government of Antona War, tell me uh, the amendment of the constitution uh, before uh, the election. Why should it be amended? Uh, maybe apparently the governors are trying to see. see uh, how well they can create loopholes where, where they can be able to be, you know, diverting local government funds because that has been the order of the day. It was recently that a bill uh, was passed uh, whereby the local government will have its own autonomy. But in Anambra, Anambra, my home, my country, they say they want to do what is called amendment of that particular constitutional <laughs> to be able to use it uh, before the election. Meanwhile, uh, on our Kaba, uh, since when my uh, give birth to me, uh, I never see any special thing where we say uh, you go say government don't do. Is it water? Uh, now, now, now people dig their own water. Is it house? And now people they pay for their house rent. Is it building? Now people they build their house. Is it school? Government does not give loan for you to go to school and pay them back. Uh, the government of Nigeria, which are managed by few black heads, uh, are minded to their own pocket. What they want is that one that we uh, enter into their pocket. Pocket. If not their pocket, forget about it. And that is what has been killing the nation, because everybody is fighting for their pocket. Everybody is just fighting for their personal pocket. You know, Shale. Uh, I see the B. <laughs> uh, somebody don't talk to you. They say you should apologize to God and to us so your sins will be forgiven. Delta State Governor 8 
Nox actress Ekene Umenwa over her Virgin Mary inspired maternity photos. <laughs> Uh, you get one woman where they art movie where they call her Mecca Umenwa. Uh, she won't go take maternity photo, and at the rest, where we say she go choose where and uh, to make she day like Virgin Mary. And I one boy they tell her, say, saying go so far, say, making apologize to the people and also apologize to God so that God can forgive that sin. But do you think that God care about some, some of these things, or maybe, uh, you know, or that's okay. Meanwhile, this is where I'll be winding down the curtain. And if this is your first time of joining us, kindly go ahead, subscribe, like, comment, and share. And also remember to on your notification button so that whenever our news drop, you will be the first one. And thank you for listening. God bless you.